What I know is that people are suffering. They're in unbearable, unspeakable pain. It's not like it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just what is, it's the cycle of life. That people, hurting people will hurt people. And so I know that. And so I realized that I don't, I, know, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that people are just really born bad, mad, or evil. I think we're, for the most part, innocent creatures, and then life happens to us. Somebody violates your body, violates your spirit, and you have nowhere to go with that. And I, I just, I know that intuitively, but it's also because of the, the book that I wrote, Black Pain, it just looks like we're not hurting. I get so many letters from especially brothers in prison who will say to me, thank you for helping me understand why I'm here. And then they will tell me about having been violently raped um, and just, you know, molested by men and women in their lives and they never told anybody or they just never got any kind of peace about it. They never had anywhere to go with sharing that story and to begin to get healing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've been personally just very struck by that. But always, I'm a social worker. Uh, was born one, I'll be one till the day that I die. I can't even run from it. But, and I, during college and graduate school, I worked at a residential treatment center. And I saw so much and I also saw that if I could expose them to a different kind of environment, maybe they would have the opportunity to see what else is out there. My heart just broke because people always ask, what's wrong with that person? The question really is, what happened to that person? Well, you never know what a person's journey is. And I'm saying that it starts at birth. It starts in the womb. If you are, um, if you're pregnant and there's all kinds of violence, trauma, unhealthy things going on, and you're carrying that baby, it's transferred. Everything that that mother is feeling and experiencing is already right there. Right there. That's where it starts. And then, the mother, we don't get the help that we need, you know? That's a big issue as well. This particularly in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. We think that to talk to a therapist um, is a sign of weakness. It means you're crazy. Uh, I just know that people need to experience humanity, and there are so many people who haven't and they pass it on for generations and generations and generations and no one's getting help. So we have sad, unha unhappy, unhealthy, traumatized people who are having babies. They, they have not even nourished or tried to heal themselves. So what's gonna happen for the next generations? Nobody's getting any help. And as I said, I just always, I've always said because of a number of the young people that I've mentored, that if somebody ever took me out, someone that I was working with, or if in the course of walking down the street and somebody takes me out, the question for me is what happened to that person? You know, that's what I, that's how I really, really feel. It's like if you knew what a person had gone through, you would say, oh, I get that now. You're hardened, and there's nothing in your world, in your space, to give you any kind of other perspective or balance. And people are experiencing, kids and adults are experiencing so much violence, so much trauma these days, and you see someone cut down right in front of you, and then you get up and go to school or work the next day like you didn't just witness the worst thing ever. And nobody is being treated for post-traumatic stress disorder. 
But once you get in that classroom or the workplace, you can't function because of what you just saw. And nobody's offering the help. It's just like no one offers the help. I remember recently a two-year-old in a playground was shot in her leg. Uh, and her mother said, this is a piece in the Daily News, and her mother said, every single time, of course, that she hears a loud sound or a pop, she starts screaming. So her mother could say that, she, she doesn't know that it has a name, and she doesn't know that she needs to get her daughter help, mm -hmm. do you know? Um, the unique trait, quality is, quality is that we are all human. We're fragile, and we have inherited unresolved pain, wounds, trauma, and scars of our parents. When you have means, you just have more money to self-medicate because we will do anything, anything on God's earth to not feel the real pain that we're in. We will self-medicate with drugs, with alcohol, with food, promiscuous, unprotected sex, shopping when you don't have any money, gambling, working. Working and food were my addictions for a very long time. And then just, you know, the anorexia and the bulimia, the pain, the emotional pain that we're in is so great that you will um, um, burn yourself, cut yourself to not feel the real pain that you're in. Anything. So I just think that, you know, for, for so many, it's just, it's just too great. And either they, they uh, don't get the help that they need or they have enablers around them that happens a lot. I, I think that we could, and I think that there are a lot of people, you know, philanthropists who know that it makes, like we can make money and do good, you know? I think that all of us are on the planet to hold each other up. Uh, that's what I really believe, that if you have the means, you are supposed to lift somebody else up with you. It's just, that's what you're supposed to do. I just had people in my life who uh, really reached out to me, saw my potential, and created amazing opportunities for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I just know that I have a responsibility to pass that on. But I'm just saying that there are things, oh, even though I wasn't beaten or anything like that, there are things that just get passed on to us and they shape our personalities and you just never know what a person's journey has been. I just wish more, more of us, people of color, black folks, would understand that you have to talk about and get rid of the poison that is inside you, the pain and suffering, because you, when, when seeing, talking to a therapist or a life coach or whatever you want to call that person, a psychiatrist, they help you to make connections between why you've been doing the things that you're doing based on something that happened in your childhood. And I just, I wish that it was something that everyone could have the experience of or would either just be open to possibility. It's all of the, you know, and one of the hardest jobs on the planet is to be a black man in America, and particularly to be a dark-skinned black man in this country because you intimidate everybody, and you know that as you move through, you just, you know that. No, that's a very good question, and one of the things that I think is really, really important is that adults always want to protect young people. So in doing so, they don't tell them the truth. Like, we really set our kids up for emotional failure, right? Because when that kid says, mommy, daddy, adult figure, are you sad, are you angry? The moment we say no, we're teaching our kids how to lie, how to wear the mask, how not to deal with their emotions. We're teaching them to second guess their intuition because their intuition told them something was wrong, but this most high person in my life just lied to me and they know that. And the worst part of it is we're just trying to protect them 
but what we're doing is really setting them up because the worst part is they look to us for answers, resolutions, right? So when we lie and say, oh, everything's fine, then um, we don't get to tell them what we do when we fall down. Like, yes, you know, your dad and I had an argument. I was upset. I was crying. And, you know, tears are a good way to get, get it out. Uh, sometimes when I'm stressed or I didn't get the job I wanted, I might go for a walk. I might uh, write in my journal. I might exercise. I might talk to a therapist. I might be on therapy. It might um, be on medication. But we don't tell them who we are. And I think that's the worst thing. The worst thing that you can do is to not... When you tell a child who you are and what your mistakes are, not even your own kid, they will tell you anything, anything, because you've had the courage to say, look, oh, look I just, look, I'm walking that fine line of crazy too. Just want you to know that, you know? I'm, I'm just like you, do you know? But that's what I think that's the greatest gift that any adult could offer any young person is to share what your struggles have been, um, and what you continue to suffer with so that they will know that they're not alone and not be thrown off by this mask that everybody wears. There are people in positions who can't see themselves in people who have been incarcerated. But here's what I know. I'm just like you. I am just like you. There is no difference between you and me, the brother or sister on the street, that, no difference. We're human, we're frail, um, going through the fire, we've had challenges. I just was blessed to go through the fire and come out on the other side. And what I would say to them is that when you find out what it is that you're called to do, when you go through the fire, because you will come out on the other side. It may not feel like you will, but you will come through on the other side. And that's when you know what you're called to do. People of color are more apt to witness it more, but unequal, unequal treatment, that there are the haves and the have nots. And if you're a have not, you don't matter. But what I know is that every single person on this planet matters and that as you move through life with whatever it is that you have access to even if it's just a, a clean place and a dinner at a table that's what you're supposed to do you had to ask that I pray a lot I pray a lot I think that um, I see a lot of people doing really extraordinary work and I know that lives are being transformed. And so, you know, the hope is if you've been the beneficiary of, of exposure, you as a young person right now must do that for somebody else. And that's why, that's how we have to keep the cycle going. We have to. I've taken the time to do this with you, for you, because I care about you. You got to do this for somebody else, like now. Don't wait till you get to be said age, but I just think that, and I do a great deal of speaking around the country, and I just, I talk about it. It's the little things that you do. If there are 100 people out there that want what you want, do what you do, have the exact same credentials, it will be the tiniest gesture that you make that will make a difference, will transform someone's life, and help you stand out from everybody else.